Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Ben Grunberg. I'm a learning skills advisor at Monash University. And today I'm just gonna to talk to you briefly about a couple of the ways that learning is different at university. Um, before I start, I'd just like to say that this is a moderated forum and all questions, comments must be approved before they're made live. There may be a chance, we'll try to get to all the questions, but there may be a chance we don't get to them all. And if this is the case, please just visit the library booth for more opportunities to ask your questions. So the first way I'd like, the first way that learning is different at university that I'd like to talk about is time management and how important that is at university. Um, what you'll often find when you go to the first lecture or the first class for your units is your lecturer might say something like it says up on the top right there that for this unit in this semester, you're required to do 140, 150 is quite common hours of work to complete the unit for the semester. Um, so that will comprise a whole mixture of things. It'll include lectures, tutorials, pre and post class work, required readings, group work potentially, reflection tasks, a whole range of different things you need to do within that required 144 hours. On top of that, you'll have various assessments dotted throughout semester. Um, so you can see an example in the bottom right from taken from an arts unit of the different assessments they have in that unit and when those assessments are due. So the way that university is different from high school is how and when you complete these tasks for you at university is completely up to you. Some things need to be done at set times, but for the most part, it's really, like I said, entirely up to you when you do these things, which leaves you a lot of rope with which to hang yourself with. Plus on top of that, you have other things, obviously you have work, you have family, you have friends. Hopefully if we ever get out of lockdown, you have social events to attend. So you need to be really good at managing your time at university. And what also adds to this is the fact that at university, you're not gonna have your lecturer or your tutor chasing you up if you don't do something. What and if you do is completely up to you. The way it will work is if you don't get an assessment piece on time, no one's gonna chase you up. Like I said, you'll just lose five, 10% of your grades per day and it will just keep dwindling down until you get to zero. So from my personal subjective experience, and don't quote me on this, I've got no research to back this up, but how well and how good you are at managing your time will have a positive correlation on how well you actually do in terms of grades at university. So my time management skills are definitely not perfect. There have been instances where I've been frantically typing a presentation five minutes before I was supposed to be in the room presenting, but there are strategies and skills you can employ to improve your time management skills. Um, they might be really simple practical things like using Google Calendar effectively. And you can see a little snip of my Google Calendar in the bottom left where I plan out my day and what I'm gonna do. And there's other strategies like setting SMART goals. So SMART's an acronym which stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So when you're planning your time, you be specific. You don't just have study, but you say specifically what you're gonna do, readings one, two, and three from unit X, Y, and Z. You make sure it's measurable um, and you can actually track your progress. Attainable, there's nothing worse than setting yourself a goal that you never had really any realistic chance of achieving. This makes you feel unmotivated and like you haven't, you failed. So making sure your goals are attainable, relevant, they're what you actually need to be doing and they're timely. You're doing them at the appropriate time. So that's just one little strategy to improve your time management. Um, and the first way that learning at university is different from high school, that how you manage your time is, like I said before, completely up to you. The second way that learning at university is different is this idea of thinking for yourself or using critical analysis. So when I say critical analysis, I don't mean being critical or criticizing something. Um, I think Aristotle said it best when he quoted critical analysis to be 
It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. So to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Um, so unlike in high school, and just thinking back to my own high school experience, you never really questioned your teacher. You would accept what they said as truth, as fact. You would learn it, you would apply it, but you would never really question it. Whereas uni is very different. At university, you're not only encouraged to question what your teachers are teaching you, you're actually required to do it. And that's what critical analysis is. And that might seem a little bit strange to you. You might be sitting there thinking, I'm a 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 year old student for the more mature age students. You know, what right, what authority do I have to be challenging what, for example, a 55 year old expert in their field has said. But even though they might be an expert with decades of experience, it doesn't mean they're perfect. It doesn't mean they don't have unconscious biases or it doesn't mean that their methodology is perfect or their logic is necessarily sound. And even though you're just a student, you're a student at Monash University you're obviously smart, you're young, you're innovative. And so you're expected to start developing these skills to be critical and to question information and to think for yourself. And the way you can start to do that is start looking beyond the information and thinking about what's behind it. So asking yourself questions like, who wrote something or where's this information coming from? Why did they write it? Are there holes in their argument or their methodology? or is their logic sound? So that's the second way that learning's different university from high school, for example. The third way I'd like to talk about is in regards to research and going beyond Google. So I remember when I was in high school, all the materials I needed were given to me, textbook, notes, etc. I never really had to do research or go beyond the materials provided. Whereas at university, in your lectures, you're gonna be provided the basis of the information, the foundation, but to do your assignments and to learn the material properly, you're gonna be expected to do independent learning and go beyond what you've been given. And when you're doing this, Google doesn't cut it anymore. And that's where research comes in. So Monash University, the library has over 4,700,000 items, physical and digital in their collection. And they also pay a lot of money every year for subscriptions to databases. So as a Monash University student, that means you'll have full unlimited free access to a wide range of databases. And you need to be able to learn to use these databases and to research effectively to be able to do your coursework and your assessments successfully. So a big difference there to what you might have experienced in previous studies. And the final thing I'd like to talk about in terms of the way that learning is different at university is in regards to how you're assessed. Um, there's a wide range of assessments that you might experience at university. Some might be familiar to you, others not so much. A couple of examples are on the screen now. And each of these different assessment types has specific requirements that you need to fulfill to do the assignment successfully. And to be able to do these different assessments is a skill within itself. So if you're doing a reflective task, what will be required of you and the skills that will be required of you are very different from say you're doing an exam or again, very different from if you're doing an essay. And to be successful at university, you'll need to learn the requirements and to how, to how to complete these different assessment types to a high standard. Luckily though, and hopefully none of this has freaked you out because you are just students and that's what university is here for. You're not expected to come in perfect with these skills. It's about continual learning. And that's what uni is great for is actually learning and developing these skills. Plus, Monash University has got a service to help you. Um, through the Monash University Library, there's learning skills advisors and librarians. So you'll never be expected or you'll never be 
struggling alone, if you ever need help, there will always be someone here to support you if needed. So librarians in the university sector aren't perhaps what you traditionally think of when you think of a librarian. Um, they're actually information experts. They're excellent at using databases and doing research. So if you're ever struggling to do that, you can always come to the Monash University Library, speak to a librarian, and they'll be able to help you. Learning skills advisors can help you with some of the other things we've talked about today, developing good time management habits, um, developing your critical analysis skills, and help you complete all different assessment types, depending on what degree and what course you're doing. So you'll never be left to struggle alone. There will always be someone here to support you through the Monash University Library. Thanks for listening, everyone. Um, if you have any questions, you can post them in the chat now. Or if you want more information, please feel free to visit the library booth in the general information hall.